Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. Precisely. Two best buds. Precisely. Drinking beer and talking about stuff. Precisely. Bo and Tony, precisely, playing and reviewing games, precisely. Precisely. Hell yeah. This is episode number 10. Number 10. What's up, guys? How is everyone? Good. I'm Tony. I'm here with Bo, and we have a guest today. We have a very special guest, my beautiful, beautiful wife, Kayla. Hey, guys. What's up? Excited to be here. Why are you here? Because I told you we I should have been here. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because it's special. We saved Kayla for episode number 10 because it's special and she's special. Don't worry, guys. That's the lie they told me to. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> now we're happy that you're here, babe. Thank you. Yeah. So why are you here? Rhetorically speaking. It's because you've been a gamer. You've been gaming a lot. I have. I have. And it's pretty cool seeing you uh, game and complete games and all that jazz. Do you want to tell us about some, some of the games that you've recently beaten? Well, I helped you beat Persona 5. Yes, you did. Um, I played Song of the Deep. Mm-hmm. I beat Candle in the last few weeks in like four days. And we've been busting out Donkey Kong this Donkey last Kong week. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze on the Switch. Hella hard, guys, but it's really fun. Super fun. It, it is difficult, though. I played a little bit yesterday with Bo, and I, not for me, I think. You were dying a lot, yeah. just like Kayla. <laughs> You're, you guys are both good player number twos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bo carries the team on that one, I have to admit it. Yeah. and I think it's hard just to switch back to the controls from PlayStation. It's Absolutely. It's kind of difficult just to get that. You have to relearn it Yeah. sometimes. I mean, the layout of the buttons are completely different. But um, about Tropical Freeze, to me, it was an amazing like multiplayer game just to jump into. Uh, beautiful graphics. It, it's your traditional Donkey Kong game like for the Super Nintendo. But uh, the multiplayer, you both play at the same time. So with the Super Nintendo version... When player one died, then player two could play. Um, And that's how that game was. So I I really like this updated version where both people are playing at the same time. But damn, is it difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be careful. (laughs) You You definitely have to be careful because there have been a few times where I've died. And then before I could come back to life and get down onto the, the... where Bo was, he died too, and then you had to restart the whole yeah level from your last checkpoint. But it's a lot of fun. It's really fast pace. Um, especially we're on world number five now, or island five, and I believe there's six islands, and uh, it's getting super intense. Where you just have to like race through the level and try not to die. Um, it's we, really difficult. <laughs> we've died so many times where. Like, luckily, you can buy extra lives, buy more balloons, and I think we were up to, like, 40 lives, and we used them all. Yeah. So now it's resetting back to, like, oh, here's four lives, and it's like, well, if we both died twice, we got to (laughs) restart it again. (laughs) So we'll see if we can finish it. I think we can. Um, One thing that I didn't like about it, that maybe I'm completely wrong, but I just tried playing one player on our uh, our save file, and for some reason it doesn't allow that. But the good thing about it is that you know it sort of forced you to get in there and play. 
Um, there's also an easy setting, which is Funky Kong, and that's who you've been playing. I have so Funky you Kong have, uh, on his surfboard. Yeah, so you have an extra five lives, um, or an extra two hearts, I guess, so five hearts all together, whereas mm -hmm. like, my mm -hmm. character only has three. Um, what don't you like about the game, though? Um, I don't like that it is so easy to die. <laughs> 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 and that just might be my lack of skill in the game, which it probably is. But, I mean, one misstep and yeah, there's no saving yourself. Like, it. I mean, it's definitely a platformer um, and a quick platformer where timing is key for everything. So let's talk about Candle, though. That was a game that you recently beat for the Switch. It was like Candle, the Power of the Flame or something? Yeah, yeah. Candle was a very um, it was a very pretty game, a really cute game. Like the little dude you play, Teku, he's this little, I don't know if he's supposed he's to like be. He's like a ragdoll or something. Yeah, he looks like he's a little potato. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> he's really cute. Um it's a 2D puzzle game, which are games that I really enjoy playing. Um, and it was a beautiful game. I loved the storyline. What was the story? So these, this group of people have been invaded and their villages are being burned down and their people are being killed. And Teku is the survivor and he saw his chief his leader being captured and taken away and so it's this mission for him to find his leader and on the way he has to help other people in order to get the things that he needs so that he can progress and he has to deal with um these these bad guys uh i don't know i don't remember what they're called but they're pretty much what I've seen when you're playing it. Like as soon as you like get spotted by the bad guys, they kill you immediately. So like, how yeah. do you like get away from that? Like how, how do you distract them or like, so it teaches you ways to not be seen by them. It's really just about timing, uh, following their patterns and seeing when you'll have enough time to like run up behind them or, when you'll be able to like climb up the ladder before they notice you uh it's definitely a timing specific okay. game but there's, there's a lot of like waiting waiting for them to walk and yeah. then walk back yes. and you gotta get in there just at the right time yeah and, and there's then... no lives with it right like no. there's no like game over if you die no okay. i mean there are like save points and if you don't save sometimes if you die you have to go pretty far back and redo okay. a lot of things which gotcha. is frustrating because it's such a timing specific game that like once you finally get it and then you have to go back to before you solved that one Puzzle. section yeah you're like <laughs> yeah <I bet. laughs> it's very frustrating but it was a really fun game the only uh complaint i would have would be that the moments where they had like the video story going where it was narrated, um, it was really lengthy. It took a really long time to get through some of the storyline sections. To... Was there any way to skip it? No. Uh, I hate that. And it was, I mean, the story was great. I really enjoyed the story. I just wish it moved a bit quicker. Yeah. When you were just, like, watching the video. I Like, it just, I would have preferred to have skipped it because by the time it hit like that, you know, 60 second 70 second mark i was like wow this is awesome can we wrap this up guys yeah <laughs> thanks so what would you rate it like out of 10 um i'd probably rate it like a seven okay 7.5 is there any like replayability or no like once it's done you don't really want to go back to it no yeah once it's done you're done yeah i don't think it was really a game where you like like, for instance, in Song of the Deep, there were these extra things that you could find, like... Yeah, to, like, like upgrade your... Yeah, or, or you know, system. like, extra trophies that you could could get. And mm -hmm. 
it wasn't like that in candle at least not that i saw so it okay. wasn't something that i would be like oh i need to like get the 100 percent on this i need to go back and play it again yeah i would not want to do that <laughs> hell yeah what about you bo what have you been playing i've been uh chipping away at bayonetta 2 i think i'm close to the end but not really sure like it it's a strange game with an even stranger story where you're not really sure how much you've progressed in it because it's just battle after battle after battle um but pretty far in it been playing it on the wii u kiosk and really enjoying that just sitting down in a chair on a kiosk yeah a lot of fun um on top of that donkey kong obviously tropical freeze played a little bit of call of duty again how about you tony some call of duty yeah that's it i don't i didn't play much this week played a little bit of call of duty my dad was playing on uh unreal tournament for the ps3 when i went over and uh so did a little bit of that nice is he enjoying the ps3 yeah he loves it man nice he's all about it that's six hundred dollar ps3 yeah he only plays like one chicken game scratch boys <laughs> chicken scratch yeah, he only plays Unreal Tournament, though. I guess he got some other Twisted Metal and stuff. Is he playing that online? No. I don't okay. even know if they... I doubt people are playing that online. Yeah. But it's all right. It's a decent game. Uh, Just a shooter. So. Yeah. No, I'm familiar with it. How's your beer, Tony? We it's forgot. Bad. We forgot about beer. I didn't forget about it. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speak for yourself. A uh, sip of sunshine, huh? Yeah, sip Lawson's. of sunshine IPA. This came from our buddy and fellow listener, Ian. Oh, really? Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he was up in Vermont again, uh, skiing and snowboarding with some buddies, and uh, picked out some good beer for us. So thank you, Ian, Mr. Hooks. Yeah, this is good, man, and it says it's 8%, oh, but uh, it definitely does not taste like it 8% taste at like all. It's it. like a light beer. Would you like to try it, Kayla? Oh, boy. All right. She does not like beer. I'm not a beer person, so please don't take offense to the sounds that I might make. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. It's a solid IPA. Oh, she's making a... Oh, oh she God. just shivered. <laughs> no. Nope. I think it's pretty mellow. Ooh. You know, it's like uh, it has a little citrusy. It I has guess. a lot of hop to it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, it tastes more like a, a 5 or 6%. Well, I'm enjoying it. It's oh, like no, a good old. Al- <laughs> <laughs> so what are you drinking on, Kayla? Um, I am. <laughs> I'm double fisting today. Oh yeah. I've got the uh, Windridge Farm Brewing Rose Cider. Windridge is in Dallas Town, PA. I've had a bunch of their other ciders, um, but not the rose. So I'm trying this for the first time, and then my tried and true Woodchuck Amber cider it's one of my absolute favorites uh and that's local too right sort of it's uh, pa i don't hold on i don't know either so you're you're pretty much a cider person naturally fermented in the green mountains oh it's made in vermont okay i remember uh on our first date we uh went out for (laughs) thai food (laughs) and i was like do you drink and she's like uh yeah i guess a little i don't know i'm like okay like the place i'm taking you is byob so uh, i brought like a four pack or a six pack of like a mixture of different types of beers yeah because i was like what kind of beer do you want and she's like uh whatever so no, i'm pretty sure i told you i don't really drink beer oh well i don't listen and uh <laughs> See, Some things he never remembers change. it totally different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of our stories, Tony. <laughs> so I was pretty nervous. Um, and you seemed a little nervous, too. You were like, what do you think? Because it was the first time you had Thai. And she, you were like, yeah. uh, <laughs> what do you think sweet and sour tastes like? And I'm like, uh, it's probably sweet and a little sour. <laughs> and then I felt like a dumbass. <laughs> Yeah, but obviously, why. obviously the date went well. That was probably what six years ago, close to it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you didn't drink any of the beer. No, you, you had one sip. It was awful. And I was like, "Is there something wrong with it?" <laughs> and then you told me you were like, uh, "I actually don't." 
drinking Well, beer. I was 20 at the time, so. Oh, I didn't know that. Dude, yes, you definitely you knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we got to take this out of the podcast. <laughs> Encouraging drinking underage. Oh, boy. Way to go, Bo. Not me. No, you knew I was 20. No, I didn't. And he that was trying worked to be out cool. for you yeah, pretty well. You because I was no. your DD to everything. There you go. Yes. Everywhere. I always had to drive. That's true. I do like drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, uh, you didn't really know what cider was then either. Um, you... No, I was a good girl, so I didn't know what just about any alcohol was. Yeah. Thank I tainted you very you. much. Yeah. <laughs> so it took a while, but then you found cider, sweet cider, and you're like, I like this. Cider is my jam. I like this a I'm lot. I'm a very big fan of it. Yeah. Um, any time that we go away, if we're like traveling anywhere, we always try to find like a local cider works or cider house or whatever, or we try to find local cider. Yeah. Like at you know back. a beer distributor so that we can taste it. I love trying new ciders. On our honeymoon, we went to this amazing cider house that was in this, like, refurbished farm. Oh, that was so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It was a beautiful place. Um, they had some amazing award-winning cider. That was in Ithaca, New York. Yes. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. Very cool. Beautiful, like, country, like, background setting. Um, and then the next day, we got wine drunk before 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was a good fun. time. I think we spent all of our honeymoon money on alcohol, honestly. For sure. And like the second day. Absolutely. <laughs> totally worth it, though. There's a lot of good wine out there and, and beer and cider. That's what they're known for up there in them Finger Lakes. Yeah. So, here's my topic. And I think you guys will like this. And I want to have like a good debate on why... You choose oh what you choose. If you were reincarnated into a household pet, what would you want to be? Kayla? Well, I mean, household pet, that's a pretty broad spectrum. So, yeah, so what would you pick? Like, you either an alligator? So, no. There are people. People not, have alligators. We're not in Florida. <laughs> Dude, people have you alligators. Say it that had would be. to be, like, yeah, well, I was just saying you could specific. be. All right. People have pigs as pets. Yeah, that's People true. People have. So exactly, you can pick anything. What would it be? So shark. if you're a pig, you're a pig. No. <laughs> what are you talking People about? People have small sharks. <laughs> we could have sharks if we got a big enough fish tank. Yeah, like a 40, 50 gallon tank, probably no, it maybe has more to be than like that. Like I had baby 70, sharks. 80. Yeah, there you go. Baby shark. All right. Dude, so baby. either you're a fish, I guess, or a dog, a cat, a bird, like a parrot. Or a cockatoo. Maybe a monkey. But you have to be in a house, you know? Yeah. So if you're a pig, you're a house pig. But then you could be a guinea pig. You could be a ferret. You could be a rat. You could be a mouse. Yeah. Excuse me. Can you get that from Boomer? You could be a rabbit. (sighs) I think I would want to be a cat. Oh, I would totally want to be a cat. Tony? No, I would probably be a dog, definitely. See, I think dogs rely way too much on their owners, and cats can just, like, fucking roam the house. Yeah, well, it's my turn to answer the question. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you're fucking wrong, Tony. Yeah, Bo, can yeah. you shut up, please? Okay. Thanks. Dude, I would want to be a dog, because I like dogs, and I think they have more fun than cats. Dogs just Why do they have more fun? I don't know. I feel like they have better, a brighter disposition on life, you know? Uh, they just seem to enjoy simple things more. That's true. They do enjoy simple things. Dogs are happier. But have you ever seen a cats. cat with a string? Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I, a feather or anything. We saw that last night with the peacock feather glasses. Oh, yeah. That was a fun art show. I'm just, I'm a dog person for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm a dog person too. I'm an animal person. I just think cats can do whatever the fuck they want to. And then just curl up next to you, you know, or, like, sleep under the blankets with you, which our dogs and cats do. Um, but you, you don't have to go outside to poop, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, that's really like a, that's like kind of a choice, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> your dog shits inside sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. I oh. guess as a puppy, yeah. Uh, I would definitely choose, if it were just between the two, I would definitely choose to be a cat. Um, I think I'm very similar to cats where I can be very disinterested in anything that anyone else is doing. Yeah. But then I can also want to be very involved in what somebody is doing. And cuddly. And yes. soft. Yes. Um, I'm definitely more of a cat person. The more time I spend around other people's dogs, the more I realize I only like my own dogs. <laughs> Half the time, we like our own dogs. <laughs> Three-fourths of the time. Yeah. Quarter of the time, we spend yelling at them. But no, I definitely don't have the patience for anyone else's dog anymore. I I can't deal with them. But so, cats, I'm always down for. So with the life you lived, right? Let's say you die tomorrow and you're reincarnated the next day. What animal do you think you'll be reincarnated to? A dragonfly. Probably not an animal. Do you have to be an animal? Yeah, I guess you could be like dirt on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> or you could just be another person. <laughs> you could just like... <laughs> dirt isn't sentient, bro. You could be an animal or dirt. <laughs> yeah, you pick. <laughs> Those are your options. You could be uh, an animal. Any animal. my fingernails <laughs> and finger. Jesus, Bo. It's so gross. See, I think I'd be a goldfish. So you'd live well, for that's like miserable. a day. Yeah. <laughs> no, a dragonfly lives for a day. Yeah, but goldfish are mistreated by their owners most of the time. And their owners tend to be like four-year-olds that win you at a fair. Man, I just got deja vu. I felt like... What am I thinking about right now? I felt like <laughs> I've always had... How much this, have you had to drink? This is my first beer today. I felt like I've always had a pet that I've been neglecting somewhere. Like a lizard or something, but like I haven't had a lizard in the longest time. That's we so would weird. never have any type of reptile in this house ever. You know what sucks about them? Crickets. Fucking feeding them crickets. You know what sucks about reptiles? What? All of them. <laughs> All of them All suck. Of it. Just everything about them. I don't like scaly, slithery. Yeah, I saw a water snake today at Wildwood, and no. it was only like 40 degrees and windy. No. How big was it? It might have been a foot and a half. No. I remember black water snake. No. I remember we saw an alligator snapping turtle at Wildwood when I was like just in elementary school. It was like a field trip. And we're like, oh my god, look how big that turtle is. And like our teacher was like, Don't get near it, boys. And we're yeah, like shit'll bite your finger off. We're like, fuck it. Like it was on the trail and like we had this long ass stick and my buddy just starts poking it and it's not moving. Like its neck was out, it was just standing there. And he just keeps poking it. I'm like, why the fuck isn't it moving? And, like, we all get our own stick, and we're all poking at it. And then finally, someone, like, pushes it over, and it just, like, goes on the back of its shell with its fucking legs in the air. (laughs) And it just died. Like, it was dead already. Oh, really? It was dead already, standing. Wow. How does something die like that? I don't know. It might have a stroke. Do turtles stroke? I don't know. All right, I got a debate. Okay. All right. Are video games a sport? <laughs> oh! All right. So. I'm interested to know what you think. So definition of sport to me is like, like on a professional level, it's something that you train for, you know, and usually physical training, right? I agree. Like, yeah. you have to be working out. So by that. Yes, when it comes to esports, you're training. You are training probably more than most athletes train a day. I don't think you can say that. <laughs> oh my god. Think how much like a paid gamer actually games. Yeah, but like they're when, fucking gaming when you're a professional all the time. football player or fighter, that's your life, you know, revolves around that. You're constantly on a diet. You got to, no. you know, watch what you do. For a football eat. player, they they constantly have to eat. But get big. <laughs> Okay, you don't they, know much so about training. They have to be on Obviously, a lot I of them don't. have to be on like specific diets. They Steroids. have training schedules. Yeah, it's not like you uh, go to the gym for an hour. A, there's I'm sure there are plenty of them out there that are on steroids, but most of them have to get tested regularly. Yeah, well there's ways all around that. Yeah, okay, but either way. You have to believe that some of them are actually upholding 
No, a lot of a lot of athletes and st- people use steroids for sure. I, yeah, I yeah, mean, I there's also like like herbal steroids too that like wouldn't necessarily like show up in like a urine test or blood test, but like it still bulks you up. So when it comes back to is gaming a sport or can it be considered a sport? That's what you asked, right? Yeah, is gaming a sport? I say no. I say it's a skill. Uh, there's uh, definitely skill involved. So when it comes to esports games, um, I don't think they should use sports in the word. What would you say? Uh, well, then, but what about like virtual reality? Because a lot of that, like when you're using the VR, when we're playing like Beat Saber, for example, that requires a lot of coordination. That requires a lot of movement. I agree. That's like a physical activity. It is a physical I, activity, I can but see... that's also like a niche thing, and especially like. But why? Why is that game still... though? Too. So is Fortnite? Is the same? You know. I think well, there are valid around. points. Yeah, but it's like a niche. You know, Fortnite players, the best Fortnite players in the world, pretty much play Fortnite. Like they're not the best at Fortnite and the best at another game. Their niche is Fortnite. Actually, uh, Ninja, the like, the biggest guy when it comes to yeah, Fortnite and stuff, he like won a championship in Apex. Yeah. So. I know. I said yeah. most. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah. I think there are valid points on like both sides of the argument, but I know that if somebody came up to me and they were like, "Yeah, I'm an athlete." Yeah, no. And I was so like, no, I disagree with that. You're not an athlete if you play esports. But when you when you're playing a sport, you are an athlete. So it goes back to the question: Is gaming a sport, or can it? Be? Okay, so if somebody so no. if somebody was no. talking to you and they were like, "Yeah, I'm super into sports," and you're like, "Oh yeah, what sports do you play?" And e-sports. they said. <laughs> I'm like, you're fucking ass. I Get played 2K19. <laughs> <laughs> Super into Fortnite, you know? Like some like, chubby 16-year-old. I don't think, I don't think they're I think the they same. I think they would be saying I, it as a joke. I, I mean, maybe someday <laughs> people will talk like that. I don't know. It's You definitely have to train. You have to train with your team because most esports are team-based. Um, it takes dedication for sure. But no, you're not on a special diet for it. You know, I you're probably think... hardly eating because you're playing so much. You're on like a diet of fucking Mountain Dew and caffeine pills. Well, I'm sure everyone takes it differently because any type of, you know, your body's obviously going to perform better when you're exercising and eating right. Your brain's going to function better. Your reaction time's going to be better. That's so true. doing stuff like that is going to benefit any aspect of your life. You know, whether you're a gamer or a professional athlete. You know, whatever See, you do but there it life. is. I think most people who do game don't try and say that they're like they're they're perf- they're acting in a sport or anything. Like, yeah, they're yeah. saying like, no, I'm I've been gamer. gaming all night. I'm a gamer. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think, you know, I'm sure that to some degree they're like, this is my thing. This is my hobby, my activity that I do. But I don't think that they'd be like. Yeah, this is my sport. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know about the people that get paid for it, you know? I've never... Well, that's the job. I, think, I mean, I, I guess think they say that they're a professional it. gamer. Yeah. Not that, yeah, I'm a esports athlete. <laughs> like, no, get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah, but I think that they would be more than happy to say, like, no, I'm a professional gamer. I get paid to play fucking Fortnite. I get paid to... Stream or whatever. Yeah. Play Call yeah. of Duty. I, I feel like people who are at that level where they are getting paid and they're like nationally ranking or whatever the fuck you can do with games. Sorry. I don't know. Um, I think that they're more than proud to just like say that. I doubt that most, I I really can't picture a lot of gamers comparing video games to sports. Yeah. However, it is something that requires a lot of, it requires, you know, functionality with like your knowing your finger placements it requires hand-eye coordination a lot of times you know a lot of porn hub on the side all right maybe you gotta make it fucking gross (laughs) way to go (laughs) my husband ladies and gentlemen yes 
My wife. All right, did you guys hear that they might be releasing a new Grand Theft Auto? No, hey. back to esports. Hey, hold on. I didn't get to do my topic. No, back to esports. <laughs> Why do we have to go back to esports? Because do you know that Farming Simulator is an esport now? Yeah. So think about those people that are playing that professionally and getting paid for that. Well, it's like chess. You know, it's a game of you got to think things out, right? So is chess a sport? No. But people play in, like, chess tournaments. Doesn't make it a sport. No. Is it on ESPN? Probably. Chess? Oh, I don't know. No, but cornhole is. Yeah. <laughs> cornhole is a sport. I think that's insane. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a sport. I just think it's really insane that there's like basketball, football, cornhole, sport. soccer. <laughs> like, what? I don't think cornhole is a sport. So, anyways, let's talk about my topic. Okay. So, um, I've been seeing a lot of commercials for companies that are creating games and controllers that help people who have disabilities. Like Xbox. That it helps them to be able to play all of the games that they also enjoy. So where do you think? Well, I haven't seen any of this. Can you give me an example? So it's, I mean, it's just like a controller that is, it's bigger. It has less like specific small buttons or it has like general areas where like somebody who doesn't have like full use of their arms or has lost a limb you know for some reason like they have a nub they're trying to be respectful about this bow well no i mean like no i mean it's true i don't know the pc (laughs) term for nub but uh well that's why i just said they're missing (laughs) (laughs) but i'm Ah! saying like if they have like uh parkinson's or whatever yes so it's easier for them to be able to control the things that they're doing while playing games. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's something really interesting to talk about. I think it's really cool to hear about gaming companies making video games much more accessible. Uh, yeah, it's about time, people. I think. It's about I mean time. it's well past time yeah. in my opinion. Um I don't do you... know if the technology was out back then. Like like now we do have the technology now that gaming is such a worldwide thing and more accepted by others, you know? Um, I think now is a time and was a time, and I'm really happy about it. I'm really happy that everyone can enjoy games. Not everyone, but, like, you know, people that don't have all... more and more people now. That don't have full functionality, like, with their arms or fingers or whatnot, that, you know, the controller doesn't fit their hand or hands the best way so what it is in the commercial it'll be like a big circle like a a pad almost like a mouse pad that you can control by like rubbing your nub yeah um onto it and you can either have two of them so like pressing up there on the pad would be like your triangle button for oh, right. the PS4, you know? Yeah. So it, it's mainly for anyone uh, with a handicap, but it's more focused for, for kids that like want to play with their friends, you know? So I just pulled it up on my phone. What is it called? Cause it's I was the trying to... Xbox Adaptive Controller. Adaptive Controller, um, yeah. By Microsoft. So it's a controller that you can customize to cool. fit your needs or the needs of the person who has um, limited mobility. So that's it's designed primarily to meet the needs of gamers with limited mobility. Um, it's programmable buttons. It connects to external switches. Um, and it's wireless? acceptable. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like it, it probably is. is. It yeah. looks like it is, but it's accessible for Xbox One and Windows 10 PCs. It um, looks like two little turntables. Yeah, it does there. look like it a turntable. It does, and then like a big, it's got other buttons. I just think that this is so amazing, and I think that it needs to be talked about more. Um, well, when when was it first released? Wasn't it Super Bowl? They um, had a commercial for it. I mean, I it. It's definitely recent. It looks like 
And it was like a long commercial. As early as May 17th of last year. Okay. But yeah, they they had a commercial in the Super Bowl and like I don't get teary eyed for a lot of things. Especially but a as handicap video game <laughs> controller that gets you going. It was Dude, it so, was so touching. I was just like, was this re- is amazing. It was a really well done commercial. Yeah. And I think it hits us in a, a special place because we've spent a lot of time with Special Olympics athletes. Uh, my sister has special needs. And we see all of the people that she spends time with um, when she's at her Special Olympics events. People that have such a hard time doing basic functions and doing like things that we see as being so simple and so easy you know and thinking that now they're able to have something that makes them feel even more like they're just like everybody else who sits at home and plays video games because before they wouldn't be able to do that yeah and especially with the trends of games right now like the third person shooters like Fortnite, you know, the millions, hundreds of millions of people that log on to that every day to play. And like, especially I'm sure in like middle school, high school, elementary, even a lot of those kids are playing Fortnite and that's what they're talking about. Like I can be driving down the street and if I see a kid on the sidewalk, 90% of the time they're doing a Fortnite dance. Hell yeah. You know, it's strange. And I don't even play Fortnite, but I'm like, oh, that must be a Fortnite dance. Like, kids fucking whacked. But I mean, <laughs> oh, people yeah. are very serious about Fortnite. Like, parents are getting their kids tutors. I heard that for Fortnite. I uh, mean, because it's an actual like. Take my money. It's it's an it's a it's such a it's becoming this thing where you know you can get into tournaments for it. You can get paid for playing Fortnite. And now that people are looking at gaming as being something more than just the hobby that you yell at your kid to stop doing at three in the morning to go to sleep before they go to school, (laughs) you know, people are taking it more seriously and seeing it as something that like a kid could do with his future or she could do with her future. You know, it's especially, you know, if your kid's not like an athlete, you know, yeah, and they enjoy gaming, it's like, well, how can I make this a profession? I just, I just thought, you know, this, adaptive controller and now that one company's done it all of the other ones are going to be coming out with it too hopefully yeah i mean to be competitive you really should you know or or microsoft allows it for all platforms they might i did not read up completely about it but even still i'm sure that other companies are going to be coming out with it i think it's amazing i think inclusivity is so important especially in in all different communities you know yeah the gaming community you know i think it's i think the gaming community has a wide door open for anyone honestly it's yeah. the best community but now to be more a part people of. can get through that door absolutely so way yeah. to go microsoft on coming yeah. out with this and helping still not gonna buy an xbox one though but yeah i think it's great yeah i mean we we need more gaming systems like I need herpes. So Damn. <laughs> so that segues into my next topic. Herpes? Yeah, herpes. <laughs> Tony, did you want to talk about herpes? <laughs> Definitely don't want to talk about herpes. <laughs> or any STD. <laughs> oh, damn it. Well, All right, well, that's, let, me, that's... let me erase these next four questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite saying, one of my favorite sayings is that glitter is the herpes of arts and crafts because it never goes away. Oh my God. True. And there's really not too much that's more true in this world because there are still glitter in my car in like the crevices of my car from musical performances I've done from the past like year and a half, two years. Yeah. Insane. So, Kayla, since you're our special guest this weekend, mm-hmm. I I like to ask the guests a series of questions when it comes to gaming. Okay. What's your first video game memory? Mario Kart. Isaiah, my younger brother, and I would play it at my dad's house. And we had this old keyboard that wasn't connected to anything. So we only had one controller, I think, or we had the game where only one person could play. I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. But while one of us was playing, the other one would just be typing nonsense 
onto the keyboard. That's acting. not connected to anything. It's, it wasn't. <laughs> but we would type nonsense on it and we'd be like, are you ready for the boost? Are you ready? And go! And we'd hit like the space button or the enter key and we would it, we just were so into it that we would be like, oh, thanks for that boost. Okay. Okay. Work on another one. Work on another one. And we type out more nonsense and hit all of these stupid buttons that like. Oh, that's so funny. It didn't make any sense, but it's it's a really great memory that I have of Isaiah and I playing Mario Kart and. Using your imagination. Yeah. I mean, making the most of the shit that you've got around because, you know, we had to make it work so that we both felt like we were included in because your dad didn't want to buy a second controller well i don't know i don't really remember but so was that for the n64 or super nintendo or what okay pause i don't know <laughs> okay <laughs> what did the controller look like that i don't guys remember was it a second keyboard i remember the keyboard <laughs> <laughs> there's only one keyboard i know that okay but yeah, that was my first – that's my first gamer memory. That and there was a lot of Pokemon. On what? Uh, a Game Boy. Okay. Um, I remember actually when I was like seven or eight, we were really into Pokemon. And we were very into like Pokemon cards and the movies. And I remember we were out shopping at a store and one of the newer movies came with like an exclusive card. Of the Mew. It was Mew. Yes, and it was like the holographic. And it was the an ancient Mew. I had one of those. Um, So I wanted it so bad. Yep. And my mom wouldn't buy us the movie. It was purple. So if you went to see it at the movie theater, you got it too. Yeah, that's how I got well, it. Well, we did not have funds like that <laughs> growing up where we could go to the movies all willy-nilly. So <laughs> we, I, um, I stole the Pokemon card out of the... No. DVD packaging because it was like wrapped in plastic. Call the cops. It, uh, and it was a VHS actually. And um, I was so guilt ridden the whole <laughs> way through the store. And like we got to the car and I was just terrified. And I told my mom in the car and she made me go back in and she made me speak to a manager and apologize and return the card. And it was one of the most traumatizing. So you broke the seal on experiences. that VHS. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to buy the tape then? No, I don't think so. See, if I was a manager, I would have been like, well, you bought it now. I mean, that would have defeated the whole purpose of teaching me a lesson because I would have got what I wanted. I remember going... It was like Indian Echo Caverns or something like that. We're not going to talk about my history with theft? Well, I want to talk about my history. <laughs> You've and, got a uh, longer rap sheet than me, Bo. Yeah, I'm only touching on a very early theft thing. And uh, not that I'm a thief. I don't steal anymore. <laughs> but uh, there was like all these crystals in like the gift shop. Uh, and there was like this really cool one that like under the black light. Of it, course it was a crystal. Yeah, something that we have a lot of in this house. Yeah. I collect a lot of things. Lot of Either things. way, I, I was attracted to this rock, and uh, I wanted it. My parents were like, it's a rock. We're not buying that for you. Really? So I put it in my pocket, and my mom later found it, like, weeks later, and she was like, how did you get this bow? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I found it. She's like, this is the same rock that you wanted at the gift shop. So she made me write a letter and send that back uh, with the money that it would have cost, too. Damn. So that was fun. Jana getting tough. So, kids, if you steal anything, hide it from your parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't steal, or you'll develop a very strong fear of authority. I remember that's the moral of my story. I remember, at least. I remember my sister would take me to the mall and you know, those, I think it was like Payless shoes, like where they keep all the boxes out for you to try them. Yeah. She'd go in there with like beat up shoes and fucking put on new shoes and just walk out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Way to rat your sister out on a podcast. 
Yeah. Aubrey, I am sorry. It was pretty that clever. That your brother has no sense of loyalty to you. It was pretty clever. Messed up. So every time I go to like Foot Locker and look at the Nikes and I put them on, they usually only like give you one at a time. Have you yeah. ever noticed that? Yeah, they do that on purpose. I'm like, well, yeah. Or I'm, they give you the box usually and walk away. No, no. They'll like watch me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> You're shady. <But> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I need shady. both of them. <laughs> it must be the beard. Tony, like, have I, you I ever stolen anything? No, I need yeah. both of them, and then I'll put them on, and I'll like fake juke them, like I'm running out of the store, and I'm like, ah, just just testing it out. You're I've done that like the past asshole. two times. Uh, th- I mean, they laugh about it; they think it's funny. Uh-oh. They're like, "This fat ass ain't running." <laughs> 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 Don't worry, guys. He wouldn't get far. Yeah. How about you, Tony? Yeah, I mean, we used to steal like candy and shit all the time. At- Gas stations and stuff. Ooh, bad boy. Yeah. What else? I don't know. I'm sure I've stole other stuff. Um. Anybody else you want to rat on today? <laughs> Have you never heard that snitches get stitches? There's a statute of limitations, I'm sure. So uh, they're probably fun. This yeah, is, but I, I mean, highly this, doubt. This has all Aubrey's been like over 15 years. Him ratting her out like this. I think it's funny. Yeah, I'm sure she thought it was funny until you told however many people are going to listen to this. Well, let's move on to the next question, because if we talk about your thieving history, it's going to take hours and hours and hours, (laughs) because so far, that's all we've talked about. So what was the next question? Uh, Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. I probably shouldn't have said any of that. It's fine, though. Was that a siren I just heard? Sirens are on our end. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, what kind of games do you like, Kayla? Um, I am a big fan of 2D puzzle games. Why 2D? Um, because I like that you don't have to move the camera to see things. Okay. Um, I have pretty severe motion sickness, so wiggling a camera around a lot really makes me dizzy. It makes me nauseous. Um... First, somehow I got through it with Persona 5, I think because I just got so into it. But when it's a new game I'm starting and I have to wiggle the camera so I can see things, it makes me so dizzy and so nauseous. Yeah. And I can't play. Um, even Donkey Kong has been like that. Like, even though it's 2D, when it does, uh, when you're in barrels and it like goes into 3D and it like starts shooting you all over, like I got dizzy and like, oh, nauseous. yeah, yeah, so I was yeah. like, oh my god, I can't even watch this. It was like a roller coaster, very, very dizzying. But no, I really love uh puzzle games, even though I get really frustrated with them. Yeah, um, a couple of times I threatened to break the switch because I kept messing things up and don't break my switch. candle or uh, Donkey Kong. But, you know, don't give me a reason to, and I won't break the switch. Damn. It's not the first time I've threatened to break one of your consoles, right? Yeah. Yeah, you've got plenty. So, <laughs> this is this is a general question to all of us here. What do you think, uh, what do you think makes a good video game a good video game? Like, what element? Like, what element above all the rest? Yeah. Um, I mean, graphics, for sure. I don't think so. Graphics and soundtrack. I think, yes. Nailed it on, nailed it on the head. I think soundtrack, definitely. Um, It's the same thing with movies for me. Like, if it if you have an awesome soundtrack, usually your game's going to be good. Yeah. Like, games that ha- have no sound, I hate. Like, that one that w- we started playing, Limbo. Oh, God, where it was just... It was so quiet. So it, quiet. No, it was awful. Yeah. But it was it. also in, an incredibly boring visual game. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was, everything was in shadow. It was grayscale. Yeah. You know, if that were my thing, I would I probably th- have loved it. But there was no sound. There were no colors. Or yeah. there was nothing that, you know, grabbed my attention from the get-go. It started off. There was no story. There was, you know... No intro about what you were doing, how you ended up where you were. It was yeah. very just flat for me. It was and then very you die. boring. And then you die. Yeah. You died a lot. The the fucking giant spiders just oh, yeah, killed spiders. you. Yeah. 
it was a very boring game. If it had more, if it had had a more exciting soundtrack or more exciting colors and, and graphics and, and displays, you know, I probably would have been very into it because yeah. those are the games I enjoy 2d fucking puzzle games, but it was so flat. And so just like it, the boring. game was like when somebody talks to you with a monotone, that's how it felt to me. Yeah. Like I was slowly dying on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Tony? What do you think makes for a great game? I either need like a good story or uh, just a lot of action. Yeah. yeah. Something that you can get into. I guns. remember. I need guns. I'm Tony. Yeah. Well, that's what I like Call of Duty. I like that because it's action the whole time. You know, you have to be in it or you or like something with a good story. Obviously, God of War, or even like best story ever. Um, Such a good story. You know, even Mario was a great story. Obviously, you know, like, like what, going, Mario Odyssey or what? No, just like any of the like the original Super Mario Brothers. Like everyone knows the story, right? Mario and Luigi are brothers. He's going to get Princess Peach. That's essentially. Yeah, I think that story is played out, especially with Mario. Yeah, but games. it wasn't when the first ones came out. But right? that's what so you that's expect what with Mario. Yeah, yeah. You know what you're gonna get when or, you play. Or like with Pokemon. Uh, you know, you remember you watched the TV shows, so yeah. there was kind of a story with it, you know, so it got you a little more uh, involved, I guess. Absolutely. That's my, my point of view on it. Do you ever think that there are some games where there's just, like, too much action? Like, for example, um, when you play um, Odyssey, what is it? Assassin's, oh, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed yeah. Odyssey. Do you ever feel like there's no time for you to catch up when you're, like, you are battling one person and then you kill them and then you turn around and there's another person you've got to kill or like, yeah. Do you ever feel in some games, you know, like I felt like that with persona five, a lot of the times when you would be in the mementos and you would run into one Mm -hmm. person, one like thing where you had to battle it out. And then the second you were done with that and you turned around, you were thrown right back into another one, like over and over Mm -hmm. and over again. I think, that while it keeps things interesting a lot of times, it's very it, repetitive. <laughs> very repetitive to the point where I'm like, wow, I don't want to play this anymore if I'm just going to keep fucking. Yeah. Like if I'm not going to get anywhere because I'm just trying to, you know, fight my way out of. Well, with like role playing games, like that's like the grind of it to level up, you know, not that yeah. you have to beat them, but to get to the end boss. I mean, like you remember. Uh, both of us dying like multiple times near the end Absolutely. and I'm like babe we just need to go back and grind like and keep saving like because there was only up. one save spot like way before you got to the end boss and I was like we just need to keep leveling up and I think we leveled up I leveled up like 12 more levels yeah and I was like all right now yeah, we, we did now we can go back and now let's go for the boss and it worked yeah, I know that there is purpose behind it, but sometimes it gets very... Oh, yeah, it's super boring. Yeah. Yeah. I And same with Assassin's Creed. Like, a lot of it is new and fresh, but, like, when you're battling a lot of people or even if you're being sneaky, like, you're doing the same moves over and over again. So it's just sort of... That repetition's not fun. Yeah. Whereas, like, God of War or Breath of the Wild, like so fresh all the time like yeah you, you could be doing the same moves but how you can fight each person you know is completely different different strategy every time well and there's like a limited amount of like battles that you have to go through for those games isn't there like it's not a reoccurring amount of uh, like monsters or you know it all depends I, just from what I remember of you playing God of War, there were, like, so many things that you had to defeat yeah. to get past them into that area. Yeah, like, you wouldn't go wasn't... back to that area and those monsters would reappear. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that, I, I think I appreciate more most of the time than with, you know, like, Persona 5, where no matter which way you turn, like, another monster can always appear. Even yeah. if you defeated six of them to get past them when you turn back six of them could still be there like could reappear yeah but i also i mean i see it from both sides i appreciate 
the leveling up and that helps you so much when you get to those harder bosses or whatever but it's still super annoying yeah absolutely talking at your husband or not husband let's say not husband (laughs) uh because i want your honest opinion oh boy dating someone that's a gamer um that has a moderate uh collection what do you think about all that honestly honestly Honestly, it really doesn't bother me that much. Oh, that <laughs> makes me happy. Um, I mean, I knew what I was getting into. I mean, if it would have bothered me, we would have figured that out when we were first dating. But did you? Because I, I was remembering, you know, our humble beginnings. And <laughs> I did not have a collection when we first started dating. Like You I'd, didn't have a collection that you displayed yeah, like you do now. I had it all in a closet. For the most part, um, with like maybe one system hooked up. I have never really been that bothered by it. Um, and that's mostly because I've never felt like on a on an extended basis that you like would ignore me for games or that you would prioritize playing games over spending time with me or our families. Um so that's something that is very important, you know, if I would have felt like you were spending all of your free time just gaming or, you know, I tried to. buying more games. Fuck you. <laughs> I am speaking so highly of you I right know, now. I know. Thank you. And you're going to ruin it. No, I'm so not ruining it. shut up. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. It has become a slight point of tension uh in the past few months simply because our house has turned into a damn arcade and uh it has been a little frustrating for me feeling like i am living in a game store but i also appreciate that it is something that you are very passionate about that you really enjoy doing it's legal uh it's not gonna get you in trouble (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with the law at least it might get you in trouble with me but you know it's it's something that we can enjoy together like mm-hmm. this past week playing donkey kong was a whole lot of fun until we got to those harder levels and i just kept dying and but then, it was so funny uh, i found it funny you just got mad <laughs> yeah, i was laughing too <laughs> yeah you were laughing on the inside <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but you know it's something that i have come around to really start enjoying uh, I really love like the, the um, the the kiosk. You no, love the kiosk, hate, virtual reality. Yes, thank you, Tony. Yeah, no, the PSVR. I hate the kiosks. I would <laughs> rather you didn't have the kiosks. But anyways, I really like the VR. I love uh, Beat Saber. I really loved playing Tetris on the VR, even though it really didn't like it wasn't, you know. I want to play that tonight. Virtual reality with Tetris, but it was still really cool seeing it in like a surround sound. It was cool. Surround looking, screen like setting. And that has a great soundtrack too. Yeah. Tetris is awesome. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah, um, Tony. Tetris is awesome. You hater. Depending on who you talk to. Are you going to keep interrupting me or can I talk? Yeah, you can. Thanks. No problem. So, yes, in a whole, I would say that it really doesn't bother me that I love that you've got something that you're passionate about and that you really enjoy that you've found a lot of friends through and you've, you know, created this, uh, persona, persona, (laughs) no, that you've, you know, joined this community of people that love gaming and that, you know, you've started this podcast because of how much you love gaming. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really proud of you for doing this, the podcast, and for having so much of an online um, presence. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt you. No, that help. time it was helpful. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I also don't want any other gaming systems in our house after you get this next kiosk or I'm going to start throwing things out the window. One more kiosk. Yeah. And that's the last kiosk. Unless I get rid of a kiosk and I can get another kiosk. 
with another shopping trip, sure. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. I mean, that wraps up the questions that I have. Oh, actually, there's one more. This one's funny. Not video game related. Oh. So, we all like tattoos, right? Yes, we both just got tattooed this past week. Yeah, I actually got... I got Mario with a Game Boy, and it's pretty dope looking. Just the outline so far, but I'm liking it. My Nintendo sleeve is coming along. What did you get, babe? I got an octopus that's wrapped around my leg. Uh, I'm going to have a whole underwater scene on my thigh. So I I already have a great white shark, and the octopus is wrapping around the shark. It's huge. It's really cool. Super dope. So, Tony, you like tattoos too, right? Yeah, you have a few. Vagina hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nickname our tattoo artist gave him because he couldn't remember his first name, even though Tony is. Yeah, I got a vagina tattooed on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> but maybe I will. I mean, you might yeah, have to now. That's badass. Right in the crease, right in there. Yeah. So, if we could choose a tattoo. <laughs> for someone here in this room what would it be like a funny tattoo oh it would totally be you and tony getting like a connecting heart on your asses (laughs) (laughs) that would be pretty funny (laughs) is there a way we we could do like a trifecta because i feel like we're a triforce like three-part heart (laughs) yeah oh not on our asses though how about we get precisely no and i'll be pre no you can be C I S. And you'll be Lee. You can be So you'll be C I S. C I S. I'm pre. No, I don't want to do that. Thanks though. What would you get for I would no, I would pick out I don't know. I would pick out a dragonfly for you, Bo. I have an obsession. That's not funny. I have an obsession. You didn't say it had to be funny. I thought I specified that, but maybe not. All right, then I'll get. <laughs> what? Sir poops a lot on your <laughs> for <a> tramp stamp. <laughs> right on your lower back with an arrow pointing down. Oh boy! Probably I would get put an earthworm like on your stomach. I think that would be funny. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Didn't you say it just has to be funny? Yeah, I guess so, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Then for you, no Tony, one else has that. For you, Tony, it would definitely have to be a vagina on your hand. <laughs> no, I think Tony should get like a Tetris block, like on. I don't think he's that on his knee. Much of a hater of Tetris, though. That he dude, like a Tetris. Tetris block with like an X over it or something. <laughs> <laughs> like the nose symbol, the Ghostbuster son. No, yeah. the Mister Yuck face. The yeah. That they put on like chemicals uh, yeah, when I you have Mr. children. <laughs> I used to love those stickers. I'd put them on everything. No, Tony, it would definitely be uh, Bo's name in a heart on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I make the comment a lot of times when the three of us hang out, which is regularly. Uh, that didn't what make com- sense. What comment? Regularly? Shut up. So <laughs> I make the comment a lot that. You know, I'm the third wheel on their date when the three of us hang out because That's they true. just have a ball. Yep. We have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and they have balls. Look at that. Yeah. If you wanted balls, babe, you could get that tattooed on you. I don't want balls. I only want balls if I can, like, click them together. You don't want to click them together. <laughs> no, that would hurt. That hurts me right now. You know, that the, the thing where you, like, pull one ball astro jacks and it hits the other one uh, newton's cradle yeah it's a weird name for balls for yeah. eyes. <laughs> either way this has been an awesome episode thanks for joining us kayla yeah happy to have joined absolutely we might have you back yeah probably will since i'm here every week when you someone's gotta watch the dogs yeah too. we need someone to watch the, the dogs, dogs are sure. doing just fine <laughs> yeah the ones crying downstairs well right nobody else can hear that so they don't know <laughs> <Why not? laughs> 
So if you like this podcast and you want to listen to other podcasts. Uh, or if you don't like this podcast and you want to listen to other podcasts. <laughs> probably a better podcast. Go yeah. to gamingpodcastalliance.com and all of the podcasts we mentioned, or most of them at least, on the last episode, uh, they're on there. And it's, it's great. Someone set up this website for us. So you can just go there, click on the different podcast logos. It'll link you right to their website or wherever they have their podcasts. And it's fantastic. You really got to check out these other guys. I mean, they're great. Yeah. And I would love if any of you guys wanted to give me any cider recommendations or any beer recommendations that you think I might like because Bo sucks at recommending beers for me. So if you know... You just don't like beer. You know, maybe I haven't had the right beer. I'm sure somebody out there who's listening could recommend a beer for me that I might Uh, actually... I'll, I'll give you the beer tonight. Enjoy. Ew, your parents listen to this, Bo. <laughs> Jesus. So give us a follow if you're not already <laughs> on Instagram at Precisely Podcast. Give Tony a follow at Precisely underscore Tony. And give me a follow at Bo's underscore Game Room. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for uh, listening, guys. We will have our own website up, hopefully within a week. And... We will have T-shirts printed here soon, so T-shirts. Keep in touch with us uh, on Instagram, and you will know when that happens. We out. We out. Precisely.